Welcome to Last Day's Signs and Wonders with Mel Bond. Once again, we thank you so much for tuning into our program. We don't take it lightly. Uh, we appreciate it very much. And um, we want to thank everybody that helps us in all that you do in helping us reach out and touch the world with the miracle working power of God's unconditional love. So all of your prayers are so vitally important and your financial support, we appreciate that. And I'd like to also say to the viewing audience that uh, I'd like to ask you to pray. If you're not helping us out, I'd like to ask you to pray and ask God what he'd have you to do. As far as praying for us on a regular basis, we pray for you. We pray for the whole world every day. And then also ask God what he'd have you to do, helping us financially so we can continually reach out and touch the world with the miracle working power of God by way of TV ministry, and by the way of crusades. Just ask God, God, what, what do you want me to do? So we thank you ahead of time. Now we're going to take you right into this service, and I want to talk to you about why it's so important to Satan to steal our words. So vitally important for us to know this information. Amen. <coughs> Well, um, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians and chapter 2. And you're going to see by this teaching this morning how important your words are. But let's look at this. I, I need to build a, uh, a foundation of what we're talking about. Here in 1 Corinthians in chapter 2 and verse 6 that I'm going to show you from a scriptural standpoint and we don't have time to get in all the scriptures but I'm going to give you enough that will be so adequate to let you know that Satan has been put to naught which means he's been put to basically nothing. He's paralyzed. The devil is paralyzed. He's rendered useless. And so I want to show you that. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price to spoil Satan so Satan would be useless. Let's look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. And it says, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. The word princes... In this passage of Scripture, in the original writings of the Bible, the original language, and you can just get you a good Strong's Concordance, and you can see it'll say the chief magistrate. This exact word is used co-equally throughout the New Testament in reference to Satan. And so Satan has been put to naught. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid that price for Satan to be put to naught. Now the word naught... Uh, co-equally, verbatimly in the Greek, this is what it says, to make of no effect, void. So Satan's been made of no effect. He's void. Now let's turn your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 2 and verse 15. We're going to see the same thing using different words. It's important for us to see this. We're laying a foundation Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15, it's talking again about how that Jesus, if you read that entire chapter, you can see this, that Jesus, when he died on the cross, that's what he did. That was a time of victory. It wasn't a time of defeat. He spoiled the devil when he did this and his kingdom. Verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Now, you'll notice, drop down to verse 16, and it says, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. The word abolished in the Greek, this is what it says. It says to render useless uh, without effect, make void, no force. That's what he did in enmity. This word enmity, both in verse 15 and verse 16, it says this in the Greek. It says, especially Satan. And so, 
when Jesus died on the cross. He abolished Satan, made him of no effect, made him void of no force, made him, rendered him useless. Okay? Turn your book, your, your Bibles to the book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 15. And again, you see the same thing. You, if you'd read verses prior to that, you'd see that it's in reference to Jesus dying on the cross and one of the reasons he died on the cross so that we could have victory over the devil and render the devil useless. So look at verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. The word spoiled in the Greek co-equally is rendered as uh, to cease, to strip, or to stop him. And principalities in, is in reference to Satan and his kingdom. And so, again, he was rendered useless. He was destroyed of all his powers on the cross. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. This is better news than what you might think. And I'm going to show you why. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Now here's what I want to say just to clear this up real quick. And it, it take us a half an hour to teach along these subjects, this subject. But you go home and do a little research. But it says... Uh, he that committeth, he or she that committeth sin is of the devil. And so some people might say, well, the Bible says to know to do good and do it not sin. So that means Jesus is the Lord of my life, but I've sinned. And so am I of the devil? This sin, as you study the Bible, there's three categories of sin. And this category of sin is rejecting Jesus as Lord. And if, if Jesus is the Lord of your life, then you're not of the devil and you have not committed this sin. So I want to clear that up before we go on. So he or she that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, listen to this, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The word works in the Greek co-equally is Satan's occupation. And so was Jesus manifested? Did Jesus come? Did he die on the cross? Did he raise from the dead? Absolutely. Well, then the second part of this verse is true also. Then the works, the occupation of, devil, of the devil has been destroyed. It's destroyed. Destroyed. Well, now, there's a lot of question marks in a lot of people's minds, but I'm not finished yet. Turn your Bibles to the book of Isaiah in chapter 14. So I want to give you, the, and there's more scriptures to validate that, but I want to give you enough to let you see that it's valid. Satan has been destroyed. He's useless. His occupation, and the Bible teaches us that Satan's occupation, John 10.10 10 really clears it out, clears it up rather. It says Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So that was, that's his occupation, to kill, destroy. To steal. Look here in Isaiah chapter 14, and so that you can see that it's, you need to go home and read the whole chapter, and you'll see that this chapter is talking about Satan, but we'll just bring it out a little bit in verse 12. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, the son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Okay, so we're talking about Satan. And then look at verse 16. This is, if you'll read Isaiah chapter 14, it's talking about the end of time after the rapture has taken place. And the Bible talks about how that Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years by one angel and taken and bound into the lake of fire. He and all his demons. And so from now are from after the time that Jesus died on the cross. He was spoiled. But from that time until the rapture of the church, 
That's what it's talking about. Isaiah chapter 14. And so here we're at the end of time and there's going to be many that will say this. Verse 16. That they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. Say, looking at Satan. And consider thee saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? And in the Greek or the Hebrew, because this is Hebrew here, it says, made the earth to quake, to tremble, and to shake. What are we talking about? Earthquakes. Satan's the author of, of earthquakes. Pretty powerful. Satan can cause an earthquake and, and destroy entire cities, destroy thousands of lives. And said, he did this. That did shake kingdoms. And the word shake here in the, the Hebrew, it says to shake and tremble in the skies. So what are hurricanes and what are tornadoes? There's that shaking that goes on in the sky. And Satan's the author of that. He's the author. He did that. Verse 17, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof. And so there's been many cities and much of the world uh, has been destroyed over the, since Jesus died on the cross up until this time now, until the rapture. Earthquakes, cities destroyed, lives destroyed. How did he get that power? Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross and spoiled him, made him useless, made him void, made his occupation totally obsolete, gone. How did he get this power? How in the world did he get it? God took it away from him. It, but now, he's got it. You know, just even the, in the last... 12 months all over the world. There's been all kinds of catastrophes that goes on. And Satan's the author of it. Those 17 children that were lives were destroyed. That was the devil that did that. How did he get his power? Would you like to know? I'm going to show you. But you know, we've run totally out of time. We'll have to wait until next week. No, I'm going to show you right here. As I study the Bible, and I'm going to validate this, as I study the Bible, that here's where Satan has got his power. He gets it from us. He gets it from us. He gets it from Christians that are speaking words that gives him power. The Bible plainly says, Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 12, I think it's verse 37, he says, you are justified or you're condemned by the words of your mouth. And so as I study the word of God, I see that God has ordained us to be like Jesus. He's ordained. There's so many scriptures that, that plainly teaches us that. Ephesians in chapter 1. Read that whole chapter. And the Bible says that we... The body of Christ are the fullness of God in this world. We fulfill the mind and purpose of God. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, as he is, so are we in this world. And so in essence, God has given us the privilege and the prerogative to be children of God. In essence, listen to me real close, I believe in reincarnation. Only in this fashion. Only in this fashion that we are Jesus reincarnated. Now let me just say it. Let me clear. Don't throw rocks at me. We are the body of Christ. Today, we represent Jesus. We are the representation of Jesus in this world. In the realm of the Spirit, when you are born again, in the realm of the Spirit, when the devil looks at you, 
Well, we're so excited to let you know we're coming back to West Palm Beach, Florida. God wants to do some great things there, and he's told me to come back immediately, and so I want to follow the voice of the Holy Ghost. So we're going to have a, a great miracle service uh, once again. I believe it's going to be greater this time in West Palm Beach, Florida. It's going to be April the 13th at 7 p.m. at the Holiday Inn right there close to the airport in West Palm Beach, Florida. And so uh, we follow the voice of the Holy Ghost and we pattern after our leader, our uh, Lord Jesus Christ. And every service he had was a miracle service. And so we really try to do the best we can to pattern after the Lord Jesus Christ. And all the gifts of the Spirit are generally in operation in all of our services, not just through me, but I teach people to act like Jesus, to know all the gifts of the Spirit. And so uh, there was many miracles. In fact, most of the miracles the last time that we were there were from our prayer team that prayed for people. And so once again, we're going to do the same thing. And so we want to encourage you to bring people that are blind, bring the deaf, bring the crippled, people that are paralyzed, people missing bodily parts, bring the dead. I promise you that uh, miracles are going to take place. God's going to be glorified. We're going to make a fool out of the devil. April the 13th, 7 p.m. at the Holiday Inn right there and close to the airport in West Palm Beach, Florida. Looking forward to seeing you then. So he's, he's got problems in his right wrist, he says, because of doing a lot of computer work. He's got pain now. How long has the pain been there? So how long would you say it's been? Ha seven years. Oh, this is going to be fun. Put your hands down and just, just relax. Everybody stretch forth your hand towards uh, Joseph right wrist. In Jesus' name, we take authority over that demonic spirit. You leave his wrist. In Jesus' name, you can't stay. And in Jesus' name, we command that area to surrender. Relax to God's miracle power. In Jesus' name. Now, Joseph, stretch your hand up in the air and, and do what was difficult for you to do before. What was difficult? And, and it's, this is so vitally important. Actions, and this is vitally important. Matthew 7, 7, Jesus said, seek and you'll find. Never look for how difficult, how, like if there was pain, don't look for the pain, but look for the relief. How much relief? No pain at all. You had before. I forgot your name. Rosemary. Rosemary, that's right. And this is what happened. I went to, I fell at my son's house in California. I fell on my head. Okay. And you know what? God raised me from the dead. Amen. I mean, he actually raised me. So from you died when you fell. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's true. Is that true, Ed? I couldn't remember if that was true. Now, I know I went out. Mm, I knew nothing. Mm -hmm. I think he did raise me from the dead. Is that not true, Ed? What did he say? <laughs> I got my hearing aid. Um, oh, she had bleeding inside of her brain. Okay. Yeah. Call 911. Okay. Yeah, I guess I, I was probably in Florida. Yeah, you were. Yeah, so you got somebody at the church here. Yeah, I called up here and had yeah. you guys pray. Donna prayed. So, and the day that she prayed, Mm -hmm. uh, we prayed that I would be able to get out mm -hmm. and that God would give me what I wanted to, you okay, know, to get out. Okay. That day I was going to get out Thursday. Okay, great. So great. now it's Sunday, but that's okay. Okay. Well, what can we pray with you about, okay, Rosemary? Yeah, I just want to be completely healed. Okay. And I want to work for God. Okay, so that I, I've never seen you with a walker before. No, I haven't. Uh, it's for steadiness. Mm -hmm. So I don't go back again. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just Okay. I want to work for him. Okay. Close your eyes, Rosemary. Yep. And everybody stretch forth your hand towards Rosemary. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, we take authority over any kind of a sickness, a disease, or a problem in her body, in her head region, all through her body, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Mm -hmm. We command every cell and every fiber to be influenced by the loving kindness of God, the miracle working power of God, mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. 
See, see that wire over there or that wall? Don't don't go by the that wire. That white little thing on the wall. No, because I don't want you to cross over that oh. wire. Just the wall. See oh, that that wall. that pipe? Yes. Ten feet this side of that, without your walker. And they're gonna they're gonna walk beside you, oh, and you just feet. run like you did when you were sixteen. Oh, run. Yeah. Now, now, Rosemary, can you do it without them helping you? They'll be right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, how much better are you? I feel much better. Isn't God good? Everybody stretch forth your hand towards this lady. Don't anybody touch her. Let's just pray. In Jesus' name, we take authority over that demonic spirit in her neck region. He's the root of the problem. He's the withholder, not God. We command him to leave in Jesus' name. Now we command that area to relax. Just relax in that area where I'm talking about. Relaxing is surrendering, accepting God's miracle power. Now in Jesus' name, let that sensation, you initiate the sensation of relaxation. You initiate it. Let that flow all through your body, from your neck, going down into your legs, going down into your legs. Now, here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to open your eyes. I want you to keep your eyes closed so that you'll let your spiritual eye rule over your physical eye. That's, it's up to you. It's up to you. I don't know where your faith level's at, but I'm going to say it's up to you. Take your seat belt off. Up to you. And when you're ready to start walking, go ahead with those new legs. It's up to you. There, there's a chair right here. Right here. If she wants to sit down, let her. What, what's your name? Karen. Karen. Here's what I want to ask you. Can you feel the legs growing out? Yes, you can feel it? You can feel that sensation? Let it happen. Let it happen. If it does a half inch at a time, that's okay. If you get a half inch every hour, well, think of it. In just a few hours, you've got the whole thing. Amen. Amen. How much would you say that you can feel has grown out? What would you say? Three quarters. Three quarters? Amen. It'll, it'll just do it. Just like this lady here. Now she has, you know, my physical eyes, I don't see, from my physical eyes, I don't see her legs all the way out there. But with my spiritual eyes, I see it. But because she got out of her wheelchair and she acted, she said she felt each leg grow three quarters of an inch. Actions activates God's power. I believe she's getting the whole thing in Jesus' name. And what's so neat about it, we've got the before and we're going to get the after. Amen. Well, I thank you so much for tuning into our program that it's an honor and a privilege that you've given me that um, uh, I can be the mouthpiece of God for you, that God will speak to me in my spirit and my mind to give you words that will only enhance your life only good news. And so uh, I've got some other information I want to give you that will really help you that we have an offer. It's offer number 45. And this offer is for $30 plus shipping and handling. And if you want to find out how much the shipping and handling costs, uh, call our office at 636-327-5632 or go to our website. All of that information is on your screen. Now let me talk about the offer. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is my book, Mystery of the Ages. This book was my, has been, still is, my manual uh, for about 30 years, maybe 35 years. It gives approximately 700 verses that says the same thing as 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, that according to God's divine power, 
he hath already done that. He hath given us all things that pertain to this life and godliness. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for us to have these things. And so this will give you divine confidence and boldness to believe God for uh, what God has already given us, uh, that I've used this as my manual to believe God for great miracles in people's lives and praying for you personally. And so that'll really help you. And uh, then the other part of this offer, number 45, is my CD. It's two CDs. And the title of this CD package is The Revelation of Receiving. And it's two CDs. And so what good is it for somebody to give you something if you don't know how to receive it? And see, God is a spirit. And before anything can be a reality naturally, it's got to be a reality uh, spiritually. So before you can receive it uh, physically, you have to learn to receive spiritually. And so uh, this is revelation knowledge that will help you to receive everything that's in my book, The Mystery of the Ages. And another thing that I'd like to say, and that is uh, that 100% of the money that comes in from our CDs and from all of my books are by way of offering any money that comes in through the TV. Uh, of course, we'll pay for our material, but after that, that 100% of the profits go towards our TV ministry. And if we have anything left over, we use it for doing crusades and our TV ministry and our crusades. The foundation is to touch the people, touch people with God's unconditional love. And so we want to touch all people with God's unconditional love, which is his miracle working power. And so we want you to know that Don and I, we don't receive one penny from any of the money that comes in by way of TV. And, uh, and so if you can help us out, um, if God lays it on your heart, if God doesn't lay it on your heart, then don't do that. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. And so I just want to ask you to ask God what he'd have you to do to help us on a regular basis uh, uh, so that we can do more for uh, the building of the kingdom of God, touching people's lives. Thank you from the depths of our heart and looking forward to you receiving offer number 45. And it's for $30 plus shipping and handling. Thank you from the depths of our heart. Thank you for watching Last Day Signs and Wonders with Mel Bond. For more teaching and information, check out our website at melbond.tv or write us at Agape Church, P.O. Box 306, Wentzville, Missouri, 63385 or call our office at 636-327-5632. Keep up to date by friending us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Last Day Signs and Wonders is made possible by the generous gifts of our partners. Please consider becoming a partner and help Mel Bond take this message of Last Day Signs and Wonders around the world.